Thank you for downloading this in-ear entertainment podcast. You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets. Sonnet 41 Those pretty wrongs that liberty commits, when I am sometimes absent from thy heart, thy beauty and thy years full well befits, for still temptation follows where thou art, Gentle thou, thou, gentle thou art, and therefore to be won. Beauteous thou art, therefore to be assailed. And when a woman woos, what woman's son will sourly leave her till he have prevailed? I me. But yet thou mightst my seat forbear, and chide thy beauty and thy straying youth, who lead thee in their riot even there, where thou art forced to break a twofold truth. Hers by thy beauty tempting her to thee. Thine by thy beauty being false to me. That was Sonnet 41 of Shakespeare's Sonnets, with a few bits where I paused because I didn't know what was coming up. Um, I'm Mark Chatterley, and as always, I am joined by, today, quite a blurry... um, What's your name? (laughs) Thierry Healers. Yeah, uh, you're quite pixelated as well today. I don't know what's wrong with the... uh, The the, the, the internet tubes must be clogged. They are. It's all those capital letters that people insist on using. Damn them. Uh, so, so that was Sonnet 41. Um, I, I think this is... I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think this is quite a complex one. The, the meaning of it doesn't doesn't immediately jump into my mind. Um, I don't know if you agree. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's things that I'm not seeing. But overall, I would, th- I would say we're very much continuing the theme of trying to forgive the youth here for, for whatever he's done. Yeah. And we, we still haven't found out what the youth has done at this point. I think that that does become more obvious as we go through the sonnets. Um, I know that might be a tiny bit of a spoiler for people, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't remember the sonnets that much. But, but yeah. Yeah, so at the moment we still don't know. But this, this is... We, we're starting to get more information. More information is starting to come in. Um, but I, I, I like the lines and the the ones that I think is really interesting is is and when a woman woos. So so the idea that a woman doing the wooing of, of a man is is wrong. And when a woman woos, what woman's son will sourly leave her till he have prevailed? So the idea I think that's trying to say that that if a woman tries to woo someone, her sons are going to be ashamed by it. Well, I mean at the time it was very much the man getting the women. You, you you didn't really have girls running after guys. That that was not how society worked. As as bad as that sounds, no, no, but that was just the reality of the day. God, the, I, and when you compare that to, <clears throat> excuse me, and when you compare that to to nowadays, where it could be argued some of the more aggressively sexual behavior comes from the female of 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 the species at least on a friday and saturday night in town that's kind of what i'm thinking i uh, guys are just as bad i think guys are maybe physically aggressive i i would say that women tend to be more sexually aggressive maybe i'm maybe i am generalizing far too much here but I mean, I know I've been in in clubs, and and maybe this is just a bet. This is maybe I'm that ugly. It's a bet. But you know, women coming over and just sitting on your lap, and and I'm being quite uh, aggressive in my personal space, and and in a, in a sexual way, which I don't like. Although not 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 the most sexually aggressive thing that's ever happened to me, which which quite bizarrely was when I was Christmas shopping one year for a present for my mother. So I went into Lush, that horrible smelling oh, store. Oh yeah, yeah. They they like men touching hate. their customers, which. Uh, it's very, very weird. Yes. She, this, this woman grabbed my hand. This sales assistant grabbed my hand and insisted and started to rub in various hand creams into my hand for me. And it was the most terrifying sexual experience I've ever had in my life. It is. It, I don't do well with 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 women in my personal space anyway. But a woman touching my hands and rubbing it essentially not good. It's, not yeah, good even as a straight guy, I only went in there once, mm. and it just. Just leave me to browse. If I need help, I'm gonna yeah. ask for it. But just bugger off and and surely the most pertinent question in that store is going to be, what does this actually smell like? Because everything just smells of that overriding, make your nose shut down smell. 
So you it, you can pick something up and it goes, this smells of strawberries. But all you can smell is that acrid haze that's in the air that you don't know what it smells like. Like walking through the entrance of a boots, just being sprayed with perfume and... <laughs> uh, Perfume and cheap sandwiches. Oh, mm. oh, well, they're they're they're, they're not actually that cheap anymore. Really, the Boots meal deal. Oh, see, well, not not price crazy? wise. They're like, what is the Boots? I think the Boots meal deal is like three seventy nine. It's wow. yeah, it's it's even more expensive than Tesco and Sainsbury's. And wow, bad Boots. Boots, you've done wrong. Bad. Anyway. Sorry. But well, yeah, that's so, never getting so, sponsored uh, by Boots or by Lush. No. No, no. Or maybe Lush will do it just to punish us. Every bath we have, there's a Lush representative stood by us throwing oh, bath God. bombs in. Uh, um, <laughs> like like stinking death charges of doom. That should, that should be um, a product. <laughs> the stinking death charge of doom. <laughs> Death charge. I would go back into Lush if they started selling that. (laughs) But what what I was saying, where this came from, is that that if if we took some some teenage twenty something women back into Shakespeare's time, the difference between the sex at at that point would be hugely dramatic. I think. As in it, it. it wouldn't shock going... people as much if this happened. Yeah, well, from both sides, taking taking someone who's used to going out on a Saturday night, getting completely blitzed, not having a man tell them what to do, and taking them back to a culture where by 21, 22, they're probably married with a couple of kids if they haven't died in childbirth. It would be a, re- it would be a huge culture shock, and I don't think people will really appreciate how far as a as a species we've we've come since since something relatively recent ago i mean 400 yeah, years ago yeah 400 is years what we're talking probably not even well that, not uh, 1609 that. that was ah so just over 400 yeah yeah just yeah just, yeah, just yeah. over yeah. yeah don't make me no, question no, my maths i'm just, good at maths yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah so i i found those those two lines particularly interesting just because i think they're quite uh, insightful as to what the, the time was like, what the day was like. Back well, then. I think isn't isn't this the first time that he actually says that it is a woman? Yes, it's the first time we've had a reference to a woman wooing and and in relation to the fair youth. So we do actually know now that he did commit the whatever he committed he, with a female. Yeah, yeah, he seems to have have had fun with a woman. Maybe. I mean, that's what we suspected Maybe. anyway before, but we, we we seem to have proof now. Yes, yes, and and Shakespeare's upset. I think is quite quite rightly would be quite right to say. Well, he has been upset for a while, but I think in this one he still he, he still tries to find excuses. There was the third line: "Thy beauty and thy years full of." Full well befits for still temptation follows with that out. So he's he's basically saying, you're not really responsible for what happened. It's just that you are so pretty that obviously people are going to be all over you, and I can't really blame you for that. Yeah, and, and you get that repeated in the the last two lines, the the twofold truth, uh, uh, this of what the truths of the situation are is hers by thy beauty tempting her to thee. Uh, hers by thy beauty, sorry, tempting her to thee, and thine by thy beauty being false to me. So he, Shakespeare is saying that it's the fair, it's the beauty of the fair youth's fault that has tempted this woman to him. Um, and and that is my work phone. Um, I'm just going to press the cross. I apologise if people could hear that. I, I'm having uh, lots of fun at work at the moment, lots of overtime, but it's all good, all good, but... I'm doing this podcast right now so they can go away. <laughs> don't don't fire me, boss, if you're listening, please. Yeah. I like the job. You could always cut this out afterwards. <laughs> I won't. No, I don't we don't often cut things. I think we've only ever cut one thing once um from from the middle of a uh, uh, a recording and that was when my microphone died completely and so there was there was mm-hmm. a couple of minutes of just silence while I reset my computer. I think that's the only thing we've ever cut in the middle. 
Um, I sometimes do false starts at the beginning because I get extra chances to read the sonnets at the beginning. You might not know this, audience. And Thierry I just doesn't. Stumble at the end. all over the place. <laughs> But but I think that's fair because as uh, when we first started this, you were much better than me, and you put it down to the fact that you'd been staring at it for however long. I I need to prepare more. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need to do your homework. That's, that's what you that's, need. To do. I actually did do my homework today. Excellent. I've done them all but one. So Sonnet Forty Four. I apologise in advance deeply to everyone. That's I'll I'll I'm get so us sorry. through that one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, so so you're you're right in this sonnet. He seems to be blaming the fair youth's beauty rather than the fair youth. I think is is, and and interestingly, obviously that's what has attracted Shakespeare to the fair youth in the first place. So so I I guess the second of the twofold truths, thine being thy beauty being false to me, it would I, I is there a way of reading that that Shakespeare thinks his beauty has been false because it's kind of led Shakespeare on does that, that in the that, kind of you know yeah that the, seems that seems about right in that kind of it, it sounds a bit too much like victim blaming which is uh, you know. Know, the whole idea that the women get raped because they're asking for it and they wear the low cut tops and blah 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 um, but it don't, it, that doesn't quite fit in this I don't think I hope because I think that's a disgusting thing to do. I've, I've Fine made you by go thy deep beauty thought. being false to me. I mainly find it interesting that he's actually, well, not, maybe not that openly, but he is still sort of accusing the youth. Yeah. Which, which I think is the first. I don't think we've come across that. Like, he's not actually. I think he's 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 mentioned that the youth has done something. He's never been it's never been accusatory, I guess. It's always been there is this thing that you have done that has upset me, I guess has been the tone up until now. Whereas this sounds more as actually you have done this to me sort of tone. Yes. Yes, yeah, that I agree with that, I think. So the way it starts, those those pretty wrongs that liberty commits. Uh, when I am sometime absent from thy heart, thy beauty. So it's, it's that second line. When I am sometime absent from thy heart, it does does suggest that the youth has feelings for Shakespeare's character in this, and he cheated on him. Uh, yeah, I there is a, there is a, a small feeling of of cheating. So that there there was a pre existing relationship between the fair youth and and Shakespeare. Also, it seems to me because otherwise I can't see why. If it, if it's love from afar, why would the fair youth's heart be thinking of Shakespeare, unless that is projection on Shakespeare's part? Which I'm I'm still not sure whether it is projection or not. They, I mean, this when, this when sort you... of changes my opinion, but I'm I I I still think that it's, the youth isn't actually in love with Shakespeare. Okay, because I'm just trying to think to when when you have a. a, a crush on someone when you're in love with them from afar do you do you delude yourself that it's two way i i don't know if you do i i at least i never did when when i had crushes on people from afar i always knew it was a a one way thing i would hope that it wasn't but i would never go as far as stating that their heart yearns for me and somehow they're just ignoring it it's very easy to read into what other people do though yeah yeah, that's true. I mean, all it would take is a glance across the room, and suddenly you're like, "Oh, oh, they are thinking of pretty, me." Pretty much. Whereas it could have been a "What's the time?" and you happen to be standing underneath the clock. Yes. Yeah. Well, you 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 see no. what you want to see, basically. Yes. Yeah, so I I suppose there is there is still two sides to it, but I I guess I'm falling more on the side that I think there was. A pre-existing relationship. Rational there. Mark has made a decision. Yeah, well, you you can disagree with me. I am. You, I, I am. You are fine. Fine. I'll find someone else to do the well, podcast with me. Well, I, I have. We'll, we'll probably find out what the relationship is eventually. I mean, there's there's God, how many of these are left? Dozens. A <laughs> hundred and no, I meant of the of, of, of the fair youth ones. Oh, uh, about a hundred, and maybe a bit less, ninety. 
so so I yeah there's there's quite a bit of uh, time left to find out what the relationship between the there two is. actually is and if it finds out that you are correct I I you know I'll get rid of whoever news doing the podcast with me and go back to you <laughs> That's that's fair. I, I can come back for the Dark Lady sonnets. I love the Dark Lady sonnets. We'll get there eventually. They're the ones I know more than these ones. But um, generally, the more famous ones. Yeah. I And these ones, I like these ones. Some of them are amazing. Some of these sonnets are really, really impressive. And, and I'm very, I'm very, I was going to say proud of Shakespeare, but that <laughs> seems weird, doesn't it? I'm proud of what Shakespeare's done. He's, he's done us well, humanity. That's... Like, he has, in a way. I mean, it, it, it sounds silly, but it is. Some of these sonnets are probably the best expressions of feelings that that you have had in this form, and and that takes a very talented and very skillful person to do. Well, overall, I mean, his plays are, well, most of his plays are, are freaking uh, awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Go see. I know we keep saying this, but if you ever get the chance to see a Royal Shakespeare production, a Royal Shakespeare Company production of one of his plays, go and see them. They are amazing. To, to the point where I found out when I went up to Stratford and watched them recently, the the actors who are in the productions they get given board just outside on the on the street opposite where the theatre is. So when you are in a Shakespeare production, it's not something you do at the weekends. It's your job for three months is to do one of or two of Shakespeare's plays and put them on it's it's you study them and you learn them and it's immense they are amazing well they they they, they have yeah. performances pretty much daily don't they and matinees and so it's, it's not yeah, it's not really something where you could have an other job on the side you you just that's just your yeah, life and they do all the actors do two plays at the same time to at least two plays at the same time so you are in, in uh, Richard III and you are in A Midsummer Night's Dream which g- happen at, at different theatres and then there would be another two plays happening which, which must be confusing as hell you just walk on stage yeah. and you you start doing the soliloquy from the different play <laughs> and people just go wait wait that's that's not what Romeo is meant to say <laughs> Especially if you were Romeo as well. I love that if you were Romeo and then you come on and do you do a speech from bottom or something would be amazing. <sighs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty bottom, sure they try to just confuse each other because that's what actors do. They 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 just fool around with each other and they just try to push each other. <laughs> the audience won't notice, but there's always something yeah. going on where the actors just take the piss out of each other. Yeah, like trying to work a weird word into, yeah, a, into yeah. a soliloquy somewhere. Get the word potato <laughs> into Hamlet somehow and things like that. And, and Yeah, very weird. And we're probably coming to the end of our allotted time for this one, but it's an interesting one. We, we, we've spoken a fair bit about it, yeah, you know, the yeah. women, the... Yeah, we've done well on this one, I think. I'm going to give ourselves a pat on the back while you take a swig from your weird-shaped mug that looks like a full pint of Guinness. It's, it's not Guinness. I'm not drinking during this podcast it's just a thermos mug ah uh, uh, it looks like a, Guin- a pint of guinness well it can be guinness for the purposes of this podcast i am Excellent. drinking <laughs> oh you sound like such a sad drunk oh you're like eeyore oh everyone hates me i'm going to have another guinness <laughs> that's that's how it works <laughs> i think what is it with with donkeys and being sad by the way I, every I donkey, know. every representation of donkey that's sort of anim- an- anthropomorphized, so it sort of can talk and stuff. Donkeys are always depressed. There, there's there's the Eeyore, and then there is the donkey from the IGN bank adverts. He's a sad donkey. The only one that's not is Donkey from Shrek, but they don't count. That doesn't count because that's American. Or all, all British representations of donkeys, when you anthropomorphize them, are depressed. And I'd be very upset if I was a donkey about that. That's probably not a fair representation of donkeys. I, I don't know. Was that maybe Winnie the Pooh that set the precedent for it? Maybe. Those god-awful books. God-awful. I don't awful. think I've actually read the books. I've, I've seen oh, the animated just... movies or series. I've seen animated something of it. And I... It's it's all the same. They're all in the same ilk. The the um Christopher Robin from that, the famous five, Tintin, it's all 
a, a upper class, a, a sort of upper middle class or upper class white boys going on an adventure to prove how they want to be a soldier like their daddy. And it's just god awful. I hate him. I hate that kind of everyone should aspire to be upper middle class white slim boys. I don't know. They can. I, I don't know if it, I have no idea. Rishi Sunak. Well, Pippi Longstocking, I guess, is lonely in this country. But. <laughs> Astrid Lindgren in general know. is 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 fairly good at. Um, well, I think they still most most of them are still white, but they don't really come across as that. Well, some of them don't really come across as that middle class. Have you ever watched um, Five Go Mad in Dorset? It was a com a comic strip um, episode when the comic strip was an old eighties kind of series. Um, and we've gone completely off. So you can stop listening now, viewers, if you want. But there was a show called The Comic Strip. It was amazing. It had the same actors in it. And every week they'd do a different The Comic Strip Presents. And they did a Mickey take of uh, The Famous Five. And it was called Five Go Mad in Dorset. And then there was a follow-up called Five Go Mad Somewhere Else. But it, it's just Dawn, uh, Dawn French, uh, Jennifer Saunders, uh, not Rick Mail, but the other one, Aid Edmondson, and someone else as The Famous Five with their dog, and they're, they're all 20-somethings dressed up like teenagers going around. And they always go into the local village shop and have lashings of ginger beer and ice cream. And, and they get into all sorts of adventures. And it's the funniest thing you'll ever see on TV. Are, are, are they meant, is it meant to be obvious that they're 20-year-olds playing teenagers? Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, that's oh, pretty it's, cool. it's so good. I will find it for you online and send you a link. Um, but yes, you should read us out, I think. Is, oh, is God, I, I was hoping you'd forget about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just no, finish off the podcast, say goodbye, and then people will just go, I'm mm. the man supposed to... Uh... <laughs> huh? <sighs> There'd be a punishment yeah. for that. You'd have to read every sonnet backwards or something. Oh, God. Me to false being beauty, thy be thine, that, that, that thee to might her be tempting beauty. <laughs> <laughs> sonnet 41. Those pretty wrongs that liberty commits when I am sometime absent from thy heart, thy beauty, and thy years full well befits, for still temptation follows where thou art. Gentle thou art, and therefore to be won, beauteous thou art, therefore to be assailed. And when a woman woos, what some... Ah, oh, that went you so to say, well. what's a woman? Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's a woman, a mummy? What's a woman? And when a woman woos, what woman's son will sourly leave her till he have prevailed? I me, but yet thou might. Oh, a... ah. <laughs> who, who puts TST? That doesn't. <laughs> I me, but yet thou mightst my seat forbear, and chide thy beauty and thy straying youth, who lead thee in their riot even there, where thou art forced to break a twofold truth. Hers by thy beauty, tempting her to thee. Thine by thy beauty, being false to me. Excellent. That was Sonnet 41 from Shakespeare's Sonnets. I've been Mark Chatterley, and you've been listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets, and you can follow me on Twitter at Nuffkin. I've been Thierry Hillis, and you can follow me on Twitter at Sound of Seagulls. Excellent. And we will see you all next time for Sonnet 42. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs> You've been listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets with Mark Chatterley and Thierry Hellis. This has been an in-ear entertainment podcast. To listen to other podcasts or find out more about in-ear entertainment, go to www.inearentertainment.com.